Hello, thank you for joining us today for our Sunday School Lesson Study. Let us begin with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come today to thank you for another day that you have made. We thank you, Father, that you have watched over us throughout last night, that you've kept us safe, and that you've gotten us up this morning and given us a heart and a mind to praise and to glorify you. We thank you, Father, for this church, the Greater Shallow Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you for each and every member. We thank you, Father, for those that are in positions of leadership and stewardship. We pray, Father, that you would keep us together as the kind of church that you have called us to be. And that is a Christ-centered church where others could come to know you through your darling son, Jesus Christ. We pray now, Father, for those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are suffering from the loss of some loved ones, those that are dealing with the many issues that they have in their lives, the concern with the potential for the economic slowdown and the rise in inflation, the concern for the return of the global pandemic, the concern with the killings and, and wars that we see, Father, especially in the areas of Ukraine and Russia. We pray, Father, for all those senseless killings that we see using the weapons of mass destruction. We pray, Father, that you would help us to understand that you have created us to love one another and not to destroy one another. Help us, Father, to be thankful for what you have done for us this far. We thank you, Father, for your darling son, Jesus, who because of his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, now through faith in him, we too can have life, and we can have it more abundantly. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Again, I say thank you for joining us today for our Sunday School Lesson Study as we begin a new unit, and that is Unit 1 for the winter 2023-2024 to 2024 quarter. And our quarterly topic is Faith That Pleases God. And that begins with Unit 1 series of lessons as we look at the profiles in faith. And so that brings us to our December 3rd, 2023 Lesson one, and the first profile in faith is the faith of Ruth, as we read from Ruth uh, book from chapter one, verses six through 18, and verse 22 of the New International Version of the Bible. And so as we look on our screen, we'll see that the lesson for Sunday, December 3rd, 2023 agenda is it's divided into three teaching outlines. And that is our first exchange from Ruth chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Our second exchange from Ruth chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. And our third exchange from Ruth chapter 1, verses 15 through 18 and verse 22 of the New International Version of the Bible. And so let's look at our, on our screen and read our lesson uh, scripture for today as we look at uh, our next topic, which is our scripture for today, which has to do with the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 6 through 18, and verse 22, and it's entitled, Ruth, or Naomi and Ruth Return to Bethlehem. And so let's re begin reading at verse 6. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from, from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each one of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness 
as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept out loud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remind, remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more better for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Opah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, but it be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And so that brings us to our lesson context for today, which is on our screen. And that is for our winter 2023 to 2024 Lesson 1 context, which is entitled The Faith of Ruth from Ruth Book, Chapter 1, Verses 6 through 18 and Verse 22. And so let's read our context, which is on the screen. The author of the book of Ruth is unknown. The date of composition has been proposed as early as King Solomon's reign in approximately 90, uh, 970 to 930 B.C. to as late as 250 B.C., long after the Israelites returned to Babylon exile. This huge reign speaks to the many factors one might point to as evidence of an earlier or later date, as well as the text's own ambivalence concerning these questions. The setting of events within Ruth are comparatively much better defined as occurring during the time of the judges, as we read Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. This is sometime between 1373 and 1043 B.C. The conquest of Canaan was complete with the Israelite tribes settling in the land in Joshua chapter 23. But the Israelites experienced oppression from outside nations, Moab occasionally being one of them in Judges chapter 3, verse 12 through 31. The Moabites were descended from Abram's nephew Lot in Genesis chapter 19, verses 33 through 37. Conflict with Moab was already ancient by the time of the judges in Israel in Numbers chapters 22 through chapter 25. Unsurprisingly, perhaps the Moabites were banned from entering the assembly of the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 26 through 30, and chapter 23, verse 3 through 60. Though marriage to Moabites were not banned specifically in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, despite these deep antipathies, 
a persistent famine in Israel motivated a certain Naomi Israelite family to leave Bethlehem and settle in Moab. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 as well as chapter 1 verse 6 and verse 22. Ten years are covered quickly in the text. Apparently beginning with the death of Naomi's husband Elimelech and with the death of her sons in Ruth chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 5. In the meantime, these two sons had married Moabite women, Ruth and Oprah, being leaving before leaving them childless with their untimely death. Widowhood was an especially precarious state for women. In the near ancient Near East, including both Moab and Israel, men had far more economic power than women. Women left without male relatives to care for them could be reduced to abject poverty and prostitution might result. Fathers or sons were the best lines of defense to protect widows. In the case of younger widows, the protection lasted until new husbands could be found in Genesis chapter 38, verse 11, in Leviticus chapter 22, verse 13. God had given the Israelites specific instructions for caring for widows, both within the family and the larger community. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 28 through 29, chapter 24, verse 17, and Ruth, chapter 1, verse 11. And so this brings us to our next outline, which has to do with our beginning our scripture study for today. And so let's look at our scripture study, which is on the screen, as we look at our outline as we go through and see where we are on that. And so that begins with our first topic, which has to do with the first exchange between Ruth uh, and her two, uh, and Naomi and uh, Oprah. And so that is the first exchange from Ruth, God's, uh, Ruth book, chapter one, verses six through 10, uh, from the New International Version of the Bible. And so let's read Naomi reasons in verses 6 through 9a, which should be on our screen. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husband and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. And so we see here in verse 6 that Naomi and her two Moabite daughter-in-laws returning to Naomi's people in Judah from Moab was the best option to be cared for in their widowed status. God coming to the aid of his people by providing food for them in Judah meant that Ruth's family legal obligation to care for her would not burden an already famished community. The inclusion of Naomi's Moabite daughters-in-law might surprise us as their families of origin would be expected to care for them in their widowhood. In verse seven, the journey back to the land of Judah was a return to Naomi's family and the safety net it represented. Naomi's two daughter-in-laws would have been expected to stay in their homeland of Moab. 
with her two daughter-in-laws leaving the place where Naomi had been living, which was Moab, speaks to the depth of their love for and devotion for or to Naomi. In Ruth chapter 1, verses 11 through 13, traveling with Naomi potentially put Naomi's well-being over the younger widow's own future prospects for marriage and family. Following Naomi may also indicate that the daughter-in-laws were not thinking clearly, stricken as they were by grief at the tremendous loss they had suffered along with Naomi in Ruth chapter 1 verse 14 because all three had lost their husband early in the stage of arriving in Moab. Naomi had lost her husband, Elimelech, Elimelech. Ruth had lost her husband, and Oprah had lost her husband, which were the two sons of Naomi. And so uh, Naomi urged her two daughter-in-laws to go back, each of them, to their mothers at home. Naomi was relinquishing her rights to any support her two daughter-in-laws might offer her. They were not obligated to share in the difficulties that widowhood would represent for Naomi. Now, in verses 8b and 9a, Ruth and Oprah, Naomi's two daughter-in-laws, would be incredibly vulnerable as widows in Israel. Naomi's words, may the Lord show you kindness, have a ring of a covenant relationship language. She intends to leave the two daughter-in-laws in the Lord's care, even though she also intended to leave them in the land of Moab with their own mothers as well as with their own gods. The Lord's kindness would be experienced through human relationships, as we see in Ruth chapter 2, verses 4 through 12. Rest here, for the two widows was expected to be found in their mother's home before moving into a new family, onto new families in the houses of new husbands. Naomi's future was far from assured, as pointed out in Ruth, Gospel, in Ruth book, chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. The gift she felt she could give her daughter-in-laws was to free them to find more likely sources of stability than she could offer. Naomi sealed her hopes for them when she kissed them goodbye, signified her love in what she expected to be her final act of care for them in Ruth chapter 1 verse 14. In our next subtopic, we see that the daughter-in-laws respond to Naomi's uh, uh, request for them to return back as we read verses 9b through 10. And so let's read that which is on our screen. And they wept aloud, and she said to her, we will go back with you to your people. Now in verses 9b and 10, they wept aloud could be for the general position in which all three women found themselves, and that was widows with uncertain future. The daughter-in-laws responded with, we will go back with you to your people, communicated great devotion to Naomi. It was the pleading of two daughter-in-laws who didn't want to see Naomi leave. Now we see in our next outline the mother's plea uh, in the second uh, exchange as we read Ruth chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. And our subtopic there is the mother pleads as we read verses 11 through 13, which are on our screen. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husband? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, 
Would you want on um, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more better for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Now, in verse uh, 11, Naomi's plea, return home, my daughters, is literally a request to return from their current course and return to the mother's home, their mother's home. Naomi could not bear any more sons to grow up and care for her dead son's wives. The brother-in-law, the brother of the widow's deceased husband, was required by the law of Moses to marry the widow in a Leverite, a Leverite marriage. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 5 through 10, as well as in Genesis chapter 38, verse 6 through 14. This ensured care of the widow and also allowed her dead husband, Linage, to continue. Naomi knew that she could not provide new husbands for Ruth and Opah. Naomi saw clearly, though erroneously, as we see in Ruth chapter 4, verse 16 through 17, the end of her family line. Now in verses 12 through 13, Naomi's phrase, I am too old to have another husband, implies that Naomi's childbearing years were behind her, such that no man of her times would be inclined to marry her. Even if Naomi had uh, hope that she could remarry that very day and conceive sons that night, how could the widows be expected to wait over 20 years for those sons to be old enough to marry? Naomi's hypothetical sons wouldn't be ready for marriage until their early 20s, likely putting Ruth and Opah somewhere in their 40s. The phrase return home emphasized the benefit of Ruth and Oprah's rejoining their families of origin back in the land of Moab in Ruth chapter 1, verse 11. Naomi's plea in the remarriage in Moab was the best option for Ruth and her sister Oprah, flourishing after being widowed daughters-in-laws of Naomi. Naomi's own care would be more easily obtained if she did not come to Judah with two grown female dependents, uh, which were widows of her, uh, of her two sons. In Ruth Gospel chap in Ruth book chapter four, verses one through six. Now in verse thirteen B, Naomi stated that the Lord's hand was turned against me, which can refer to God's blessing, his guidance, and protection, as we see in the book of Ezra, chapter seven, verse six and verse nine, and also in the book of Nehemiah verses 2 through 8, I'm sorry, ver chapter 2, verse 8. But conversely, the Lord's hand can also refer to curse, discipline, and judgment, as we see in Exodus chapter 9, verse 3, and Judges chapter 2, verse 15. And the phrase, turn against me, illustrates that Naomi's feeling that God was judging her. Naomi had also requested to be called Mara, which meaning bitter, because the Almighty had made her life very bitter, as we see in Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. We cannot know, though, why God allows hard circumstances in our lives. From Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 6, we are wise to remember that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are above ours, as Isaiah points out in chapter 55, verse 9. And we can rest in the hope that God uses all things to our benefit if we place our hope in him, regardless of our current circumstances. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 35. 
And so we see that the daughters kind of diverge or split as we read verse 14, which is on our screen. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. And so in verse 14, the two daughter-in-laws wept aloud again following Naomi's goodbye kiss in Ruth chapter 1, verses 9a through 10. Opa kissed her mother-in-law with a goodbye kiss in Ruth chapter 1, verse 15. Opa acted in keeping with the wisdom of her time and with Naomi's greatest hope for Oprah's future thriving. Ruth would not be swayed by an argument Naomi could make. And so therefore, Ruth clung to her mother-in-law and would not change her mind. And so we see in our third outline, the exchange or the third exchange as we read Ruth chapter 15 through 18, I'm sorry, Ruth chapter one, verse 15 through 18 and verse 22. And so let's read verse 15 as we see Naomi's final plea to her two daughter-in-laws or to uh, Ruth in particular. And so let's read verse 15. Look, look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her God. Go back with her. And so in verse 15, Naomi made her final plea to her daughter-in-law, Ruth, to go back with her, with her sister, Oprah. Ruth going back to her people and her gods would be a comfortable cultural fit for Ruth, complete with a return to worship to the Moabite gods. The principal god worship in Moabite was the detestable Chemos in Numbers chapter 21, verse 29, and 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 7, and verse 13. The Israelites, though, were meant to be distinct from their neighbors by rejecting all gods other than the Lord, never worshiping a pantheon of multiple gods, as we see in the uh, Tenth Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 6, where the God told them that they shall have no other gods before him or beside him. And so we see here that Ruth's choice was between what she had known before, which were these idol gods of the Moabites, and what she had come to know in her mother-in-law, Ruth, which was the worshiping of the Israel gods of the true and living God. And so we see now Ruth promise as we look at verses 16 through 18. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And so we see in verses 16 through 17a that Ruth replied to Naomi, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you is an emphatic statement of Ruth's immovable will to follow her, her mother-in-law, Naomi. Also strengthened by Ruth listing her commitment to Naomi. Ruth's response reflected Naomi's hope for Ruth, but unexpectedly anticipated their fulfillment to be found in a future that included the two women together. The commitment of Ruth to Naomi's people and God's directly tied, and, and Naomi's God directly tied back to Naomi's plea for Ruth to follow Oprah as we see in example, as we see in Ruth chapter 1, verse 15. The commitment to go and stay with Naomi tied Ruth's future to Naomi's future. Whatever provision Naomi would find among her people 
Ruth would accept it. Naomi would expect to die well before Ruth. Yet Ruth's commitment was to die in Judah and be buried there among Naomi's people, the Israelites. Also, as we see what uh, Jacob wanted to do in Genesis chapter 5, 50, verse 1 through 6, when he made jo Joseph promise him that he would take him back to his homeland from Egypt into Judah and bury him there. And so Ruth declared to Naomi to be her mother and outlined the devotion that she would demonstrate as Naomi's true child or as her true daughter. In verses 17b and 18, where Naomi says, may the Lord deal with me, I'm sorry, where Ruth says, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me, is the most solemn of vows that we see, uh, as in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 17, also in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. Ruth had carefully considered the cost of going with Naomi, as we see also in Luke chapter 14, verses 26 through 33, where Jesus advised his uh, disciples to count the cost of following him. Naomi stopped urging Ruth then when she heard Ruth make that commitment to her. And so now we see in verse 22, the outcome of these pleas and Ruth responds with her, respond to her mother-in-law, uh, Naomi. And so let's read verse 22 together. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Now in verse 22, Bethlehem, which is all in the province of Judah, as we see in Ruth chapter 1, verse 1, can be literally translated as house of bread. The mention of the barley harvest confirmed that the famine was broken now in Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, that had caused them to leave Judah in the first place and go down into the land of Moab seeking food. The beginning of the barley harvest took place sometime in mid-March to mid-April. In latter Jewish tradition, the book of Ruth was read at the festival of weeks, weeks in celebration of God's provision of the harvest. In, Levi, in, Le, in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 through 22. And so let's close our lesson study today with this conclusion. Walk with one another. We are created to be in community with God and with others. Ruth's faithfulness to the Lord and to Naomi is an example to all of what living and loving in community might require of us. Ruth's words and action demonstrated true commitment to carrying Naomi's burden. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, where Paul advises that we ought to carry each other's burden. So showing up in the midst of pain and anguish is a difficult task, especially if we are dealing with our own feelings of loss. How we respond, though, to tragedy will determine whether we are following Ruth's example as she followed Christ's example. Without even knowing her many times great-grandson, as Paul lists in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. So our thought to remember for today's study is this. Remain steadfast in your love for the Lord and his people. Jesus would say in Matthew Gospel chapter 29 of the New International Version, and I quote, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. From Matthew Gospel, chapter 11, verse 29. Let us close today's study with prayer. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to study and meditate on your word. We thank you, Father, for the one that laid down his life so that we, he could, and bared our burdens, Father, so that we could be set free from the burden of sin. And that is your son, Jesus. We pray, Father, that we would hold on to the faith that he had, that we have in him. And we pray, Father, that we would apply these truths in our daily lives, that we would be more compassionate and more concerned about the well-being of others, Father, and be willing to help demonstrate our love for you through our love for one another. Thank you, Father, for Jesus' life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension back into heaven, and the coming of the Holy Spirit to guide and to direct our lives and to indwell us, Father, as believers in your Son, Christ Jesus. In his precious name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us today for our Sunday School Lesson Study. I pray God will continue to bless and keep you safe. Have a great day.